Hi, um, today we're talking about inscribed angles and we're going to learn about how to find the measure of inscribed angles and use that to solve different problems. So let's kind of talk about real quick what an inscribed angle is and it's actually an angle that's formed on the edge of the circle. So if you pick three points on the circle and one of those is the vertex, this angle that's formed right here, that's what we would call an inscribed angle. All right, so let's look at this uh, triangle that's inscribed inside the circle, and that creates three angles. We have angle D, angle O, and angle G. Okay, and then we need to talk about what's called an intercepted arc, and that just means that um, if I'm at angle D, um, angle D actually goes out to O, and it goes out to G. So the arc that connects those two points that would be our intercepted arc. So my intercepted arc would be OG. For angle O, the intercepted arc would be DG. For angle G, that would be um, DO, would be the intercepted arc there. All right, uh, remember that the inscribed angle is half the arc. So let's, let me show you what, you, what we mean. Um, I'm looking at this problem here. I know that the arc BC is 100 degrees. I notice that AC goes through the center O. So from A all the way out to C, that's going to be 180 degrees. So this arc AB, which is the intercepted arc of angle C, that's going to be 180 minus 100, which is 80 degrees. So this arc from A to B is 80 degrees, which means that X is going to be half of that 80 degrees, which comes out to be 40. So X is equal to 40 degrees. All right, this next theorem says that if I have two inscribed angles of a circle, or if they happen to be two separate circles, but the arcs are congruent, then that means the angles are congruent. So it kind of just a little shorthand. If the angles are congruent, that means the arcs are congruent. So we got this problem number three um, that kind of highlights that. Um, I know that ST, this arc from S to T, is 68 degrees. We'll notice if I go from S to R to T, the intercepted arc of angle R, which is angle one, is ST. The arc, or this angle two, the intercepted arc is also the same arc, ST. So if this arc is the same for both of these angles, then these angles have to be congruent. Angle 1 is going to be congruent to angle 2, which means that both of them are going to be half of 68, which is 34. So both of these will be 34 degrees. Okay, number four, oh, next theorem, actually, uh, says that if an inscribed angle of a circle intercepts a semicircle, then the angle is a right angle. So if I have something like number 4, where you notice that FG is a diameter, then that means this arc from F to G, FHG, that arc right there is going to be 180 degrees, which means X is going to be half of 180, which is 90, which is what this theorem up here was saying. If you see this diameter, this inscribed angle has to be a right angle. All right. Now let's look at number 5. Okay, we have a circle, angle 1 is 6x plus 11, 2 is 9x plus 19, 3 is 4y minus 25, and 4 is 3y minus 9. I know that arc PQ is congruent to arc RS, and they want us to find uh, these four angles here. All right, so notice angle T down here is the intercepted arc of a semicircle, so this right here is 90 degree angles. And since all three angles have to add up to 180, I know angle 1 and 2 are actually going to be complementary, so starting off, 6x plus 11 plus 9x plus 19 is equal to 90. Combined like terms, I get 15x plus 30 equals 90. Subtract um, the 30 from both sides, we get 60, which means x is going to be equal to 4. Now I have to substitute that back in, um, so we're going to do 6 times 4, which is 24, plus 11 is going to give me 35. So I know that's 35 degrees. 
I would do 6 times 4, or excuse me, 9 times 4 plus 19. I get 55 degrees. All right, and now we got to figure out um, angles 3 and 4. Well, since I look at this arc here for angle 4 and angle 3, since these two arcs are the same, that means these two angles are, are congruent. So I know measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 4. So that's how, what I'm going to use to solve my, my problem. I'm going to set it up with 4y minus 25 is equal to 3y minus 9. That means y is going to give me, or y is going to be 16. If I substitute that into my problem, if I plug in 16, 4 times 16 minus 25 is going to give me 39 degrees. Same thing with number 4. Alright, number or theorem says if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. So looking at this example six, I have a quadrilateral inside a circle. I don't know, angle T is 95 degrees, angle S is 100, and we want to find the other two angles. Well, because of this theorem up here, I know Q, the measure of angle Q, is going to be equal to 180 minus 100. So that's 80 degrees. And the measure of angle R is going to be 180 minus 95 degrees. And that's going to come out to be 85 degrees. Okay. Now, let's look at some other examples here. For number seven, um, we have, uh, wants us to find the inscribed angle, Z, right here. We notice that there's a central angle that's inside here, that's a right angle, which means this arc is 90 degrees. If the angle, central angle is 90, the intercepted arc is 90. And then so Z, the measure of angle Z, is going to be equal to half of 90, which is just 45 degrees. Okay, now let's look at number 8, example 8. I know that um, this arc is 120. The inscribed angle is going to be half the arc, so that means 3x minus 3 is equal to 60. 3x is equal to 63. Divide by 3, I get x is 21. All right, looking at number 9, hexagon ABCD is inscribed. All sides are congruent, so I know that all these chords are congruent, which means all of these intercepted arcs are going to be congruent, and since there's 360 degrees in a circle, I can divide that by 6 to get that each of these little arcs, intercepted arcs, are going to be 60, which means, for example, A, that's 60 degrees. Now for C, F, E, that goes from C, F, E. Notice that the line from C to F is a diameter, so that means um, this arc and this arc, if I add those together, that gives me the intercepted arc of 120. If I go from here to here. So my angle is going to be half of 120 which is 60 and then for B, C, D B, C to D. So I want to look at this arc that goes from B all the way around to D and there's 60 each time. So 60, 60, 60 and 60. So that gives me 60 times 4 which is going to be 240 and I know my angle is going to be half of that, so that gives me 120 degrees for angle B, C, D.